because you love me, you follow my commandments and I'll show you mercy. And Jesus said, because you love me, you follow my commandments. The father will love you. I will love you. And I'll manifest myself to you. So it's like we're unlocking new benefits with each commandment that we look at. Perfect day saints. My name is Hope Gameja and welcome back to verse of the day. In today's verse of the day, we'll be looking at the first two commandments and we will find them in Exodus chapter 20, verse one to six. So it says, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt, not have, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thou, thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The first thing we need to take note of is, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Now this was obviously contextual, contextually this was for the Israelites. They came out of Egypt and God was now telling them these are the new orders that you're going to follow. Forget everything that you thought you knew in Egypt. We are now following these words. Now how do we apply that to ourselves? Our Egypt is our life before we were born again. Okay. A lot of us have lives before we're born again. A lot of people do have an Egypt. It's where you came from. The house of bondage that you were in before you came to God, right? And so God is your redeemer. And as your redeemer, he's now telling you that you are going to follow my words. You are now under my room. I think there's a scripture that says that where Jesus was saying, my yoke is lighter. So in that previous place where you were, you were under a yoke, you were yoked, right? But now you are in a new place where you are still yoked, but Jesus has promised us that his yoke is lighter. And by that, by default, you have to follow what he says. You have to go where he goes. You have to do what he says. He sets that up. He says, I am the Lord thy God. I am your redeemer. And now I am instructing you. The first instruction, you shall have no other gods before me. Now the word before means in front of, right? So you shall not put any other God in front of God, right? You shall not put any other God in any place in your life. But he's very specific to note that in front of me, there will be no other gods. It's me, then it's you. Nothing in between us, no other gods very important now what gods are these when we think of you shall have no other gods we think of idol worship like the golden calf that the israelites made right but they are simple things in our day and age that can become a god food can become a god or you might be so caught up in your schoolwork and studying that you completely forget to pray you you give inanimate objects power to become your god and to control how your day goes you are not, now not being controlled by how god wants your day to go you are being controlled by all these things that you have to do all these things that you feel like you need to do first right all your priorities are coming before god and that is what he says don't put anything before me i should be the first then he goes on to say you shall not make unto yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or that is in the earth or beneath or that is in the water under the earth so for this one it's basically it goes hand in hand with idol worship right so he first says you have no gods before me and then he goes on to say don't make images so sometimes you have a god but it's not like a literal thing that you bow down to like i explained the food can be a god your phone can be a god um what else did i mention schoolwork can be a god right so those those are things that you're not necessarily creating an image and bowing and bowing and praying and serving it but it can be a god that you put before yahweh and then he goes on to say don't make images now this is specifically literally making a statue of an image or a picture painting a picture and praying to that picture or having an object that you maybe your cross necklace because sometimes we do things innocently you might have a cross necklace and it like it present it represents how much you love god and how much you you like you 
um, are connected to God, but then it becomes an idol and it becomes an image and you are like obsessed with that. Some, some people even go to the extent of being like, I can't leave the house without my cross necklace. And it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> but so that's what he means when he says, don't have any graven images. And then he goes to specify what you should never do with those images. You should never bow down to them, nor serve them. Okay. And he doesn't just tell us these things. It doesn't just say, don't bow down, don't serve. But then he gives us a reason. He says, I'm a jealous God. If you know that God is a jealous God, if you know the characteristics of the person that you love, you're going to avoid trying to trigger those things, right? And then he tells us the result of trigger, tr triggering his jealousy. He says, I will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So he says that by not following this commandment, these two commandments that I've given you, you are showing me that you hate me. And by and the result of hating me is visiting the iniquity, your iniquities, the things that you are doing. I will make sure that the third and fourth generation suffers the result of what you are doing. So when you are living life, every day that you're living life, everything that you're doing, please be mindful that you're not just doing things for yourself. It's not just for your day-to-day -day life. These are things that will have results on the children that you have and your children's children and your children's children's children and your children's 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 children. So let's not be selfish in our day-to-day -day life and think of the future. Think of eternity. Think of all those connected to you because they those by principle not by the wrath of god because god is petty no but by principle if you do this this is the result okay that's how life is if you eat you'll be full right if you serve other gods you your generations will suffer the iniquities it's a principle it's that simple then he goes on to say and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, in the previous video, we spoke about how the results, there's three benefits of um, following of following the commandments according to Jesus. Jesus said, my father will love you. I will then love you because my father loves you. And then I'll manifest myself to you. So he gave us three. Now, Yahweh adds another one here in the Old Testament. He says that I will show mercy and to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So he basically reiterates the same thing that Jesus said in the New Testament. Or Jesus was reiterating what Yahweh said in the Old Testament rather. He said, because you love me, you follow my commandments and I'll show you mercy. And Jesus said, because you love me, you follow my commandments. The Father will love you. I will love you and I'll manifest myself to you. So it's like we're unlocking new benefits with each commandment that we look at. So stay tuned so that we can continue going into it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in day three. Bye.